What would happen if the Earth had two suns? Let's take a look at the Earth with a binary star system. A binary star system is two stars that are bound by gravity and orbit each other. If the sun was replaced by a binary star system, what would happen to the Earth if this did happen? If one of these stars were bigger than the other, its gravity would Suns. Let's take a look at the Earth with a binary star system. But if both stars' gravitational pull was weak, the Earth would float off into space. The situation is unique. The Earth would turn rogue and travel the universe, frozen over in ice with no life on the Earth. But if the Earth only orbited one of these stars, that wouldn't be good due to its orbit around the star. Suns. Let's take a look at the Earth with a binary star system. If the stars were orbited by Earth in a safe distance, how far would the Earth have to orbit for life to exist? Earth would have to move past the current Goldilocks zone. That's the safe area we orbit our sun for life to grow. If this happened, water wouldn't be in a liquid state. The entire planet would freeze. That wouldn't be great. Suns. Let's take a look at the Earth with a binary star system. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. One is heliocentrism. This is something you'll learn here. Who is Nicholas Copernicus? And this I'll also share. For over 1500 years, ancient man thought the Earth was the center of the solar system. That was what was taught. This theory was called the geocentric model shown here, which means the Earth was the center of the universe. I do share. But in the 16th century, things began to change. A man named Nicholas Copernicus did decide to rearrange. He introduced a new and at the time crazy theory, placing the sun or soul in the center of the solar system you can see this new theory of the solar system revolving around the sun was called the heliocentrism model to say it is so fun in the 17th century his idea did take hold when evidence was compiled by these astronomers was told Tycho Brahe, Johannes Kepler and Galileo Galilei you see used different strategies to prove Copernicus's theory Tycho used parallax measurements and shot for the stars when he did this, he recorded data when he focused on Mars. Johannes Kepler used Tycho's information and found this. The orbits of the planets and Earth were ellipses. Galileo Galilei used the newly invented telescope to see far to discover the Milky Way cloud were actually stars. Galileo also learned that the sun had spots on it. I sing this indicated the sun was definitely rotating. All this info proved that the heliocentric Centrism model was right. From that point on, it was accepted all from staring up at night. What is heliocentrism? This is something you'll learn here. Who is Nicholas Copernicus? And this I'll also share. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of our solar system You revolve around me As we fly around the galaxy All of the planets in our 
solar system They orbit while they follow me 230 million years is the time I take to fly around the Milky Way galaxy I don't have a solid surface so made up of gases held together by my own gravity I'm made of 92.1% hydrogen H2 and 7.8% helium HE I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of our solar system You revolve around me As we fly around the galaxy My core is 25% of my total mass And 27 million degrees My energy is the reason there is life on Earth There'll be no charge cause I'm totally free My mass makes up 99.8% of our solar system Nothing in our system's hot as me I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of our solar system Some birthday videos with your favorite characters. How does the sun, the sun, produce its energy? It's a violent and difficult process you will soon see. When you open the sun and look into its core, nuclear fusion is the process in which we will explore. The core of the sun is made up of hydrogen atoms, I'm sure, which are positively charged by Unless they're forced by an extreme outside source of pressure The sun contains 99.8% of all matter in the solar system Which produces massive gravity squeezing the core of the sun When this gravity created by the extreme mass of the sun Presses four hydrogen atoms together so they can't run This pressure creates a fusion of four hydrogen atoms You see creating a helium atom This is how it produces energy There's only room for two of the four protons within this nucleus The other protons are carried away by a photon creating energy in this This process is what creates nuclear fusion Which is what creates the energy to power the sun Every second the sun converts 700 million tons of hydrogen into 695 million tons of helium over and over again. The remaining 5 million tons of matter are converted into energy, pushing outward from the sun's core to escape the sun's gravity. This pressure counteracts the force of the gravity stabilizing the sun. Now the star is forced into what's called hydrostatic equilibrium. How does the sun, the sun, produce its energy? It's a violent and difficult process you will soon see. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. I am the Earth, the only planet with organic life. With 8.7 million species, we all fight to survive. You all live on me, so work like bees in a hive. And keep this planet really healthy so that we can all thrive! My atmosphere is 78% nitrogen Another 21% of it is oxygen Another small percentage is of other elements Without my atmosphere around you would 
Thanks for watching KLT. Please subscribe to this channel, like our videos, and check out the KLT merch store.